Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam al-Ghazali's Risala al-Duniya. And I say Imam al-Ghazali's Risala al-Duniya because this has been attributed to al-Ghazali but not really uh, proven as uh, uh, his book. And the uh, the only uh, the only thing that scholars academically they say that it proves uh, that uh, it belongs to Imam Ghazali, that it was uh, that they found um, a collection of manuscripts of books of Imam Ghazali, and the Risal al Dunya was included a few years after the death of Imam al Ghazali. But that's, uh, you know, scholarly, that does not prove that it belongs to Imam al Ghazali. We know that people inserted. Uh, uh, like faked, literally, uh, texts that they have attributed to Imam Ghazali, ideas that they have inserted into his books while he was alive, and he complained, complained to the governor at the uh, at the time. So it, this is not really uh, a proof at all, but nevertheless, it's about the Risala al and uh, practice is going to be a last reminder because this is really the. Uh, last reading, uh, the text of Risal al is not really that long, and we have reached practically the very last reading. Uh, we are using the uh, Royal Albait uh, Institute for Islamic Thought uh, edition, uh, edited by Dr. Muhammad Ahmed al Sharif, and we are uh, literally on the very last line of page 77, Fasl fi Maratib al Nufus fi Tahsil al Ulum. And this is the, um, for Margaret Smith, uh, this is really uh, page uh, uh, 40 of the text itself, um, but this is not really the, um, does not correspond to the uh, uh, Royal Asiatic Society's uh, edition. Uh, it's easy to find with chapter uh, 6 on the ranks of the souls in the acquisition of knowledge. Know that knowledge is implanted within all human souls, and all of them are capable of receiving all types of knowledge. Only a soul may miss it, may, may miss its appointed share of that because of something intervening or something occurring to it unexpectedly from outside. In uh, Sahih Muslim, there's a hadith, uh, the translation of which here is uh, as the Prophet وسلم, said, men are created Orthodox believers, okay, that's fine. Um, uh, Hunafa, uh, uh, and uh, Myrmidons of Satan led them astray. In the Arabic text, of course, of the Hadith, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ حُنَفَاء فَاجْتَالَتْهُمْ فَاجْتَالَتْهُمْ الشَّيَاطِينَ uh, Hunafa, uh, this is really the uh, state of uh, uh, natural uh, disposition of uh, of Tawheed without being, uh, before being uh, led astray. Uh, and the next hadith would explain uh, though only uh, part of it is mentioned here, and I uh, will read the whole thing, inshallah. The Prophet said also, every child is born in natural religion, a natural disposition, natural, uh, the fitrah. Uh, and the whole hadith, of course, is يُولَ الْمَوْلُدْ عَلْ فِطْرَةً فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمِجِّسَانِهِ that uh, his parents, of course, her parents, uh, that his parents uh, make him a Jew or Christian or a Majan, meaning that it's the uh, social context uh, that could lead the uh, lead someone uh, astray from the, that natural uh, disposition. So the rational human soul is worthy to be enlightened by universal soul and is fitted to receive intelligible images. To receive intelligible images from it by the power of its original purity and its primal innocence. Uh, 
بقوة طهارتها الأصلية وصفاتها الأولية Now, but some souls have become diseased in this world and are prevented from apprehending the true meaning of things by reason of various infirmities and different accidents. Some of them remain in their pristine health without infirmity or corruption and receive from the uh, universal soul as long as they remain alive. Now the souls which are perfect are the prophetic souls which are receptive of revelation and the divine strengthening. And they are able to manifest miracles and supernatural uh, powers. in this world of generation and corruption. For those souls continue in their pristine perfection and their constitutions have not been changed by the corrupting effect of infirmities and the defects of accidents. So the prophets become, became the physicians of souls. Atibba al nufus Wasarat al-anbiya atibba al nufus and those who summoned mankind to the perfection of their created nature, that is to the true faith. The prophets, the prophets uh, call people to, uh, I mean, in the Quran, all, all the prophets, with no exception, call their people with almost identical phrase. In all cases, with just you know slight uh, change in the uh, wording. Uh, so they call their people, the respective peoples, to uh, worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, for they have no other. No God other than Him, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The as far as the sick and you know souls, but as for the souls which are diseased, diseased in the in this lower world, they fall into different classes, some of them through infirmity due to their abode, meaning in this world, have received a weak impression from a universal soul. And the clouds of forgetfulness have affected their minds. Okay. This forgetfulness, of course, this is really going back to the Socratic notion of, of learning that you would know uh, from the previous life uh, and upon uh, being reincarnated and being born uh, at that moment you tend to forget that which you have uh, learned before then they start learning so they occupy themselves with study and they seek to recover their original health and their infirmities disappear by the application of the simplest of remedies and the clouds of their forgetfulness are dispersed by a very little recollection 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 as uh, something that has already been imprinted before i'm just uh, trying to highlight things that could not be really the neither the language nor the uh, concepts of imam al-ghazali but some of them study throughout their lives and occupy themselves with learning and seek their fair state of perfection. And their infirmity does not disappear by the use of the simplest remedies, nor do the clouds of their forgetfulness disperse by means of very little recollection. Then some of them study all their lives and occupy themselves in learning and trying to recover perfection all their days and do not understand anything because of the, of the corruption of their natural dispositions. 
for this for their disposition is corrupt and not receptive of the cure and some of them remember and then forget and they discipline and humiliate their souls and they find a little light and some feeble illumination and some feeble illumination ويجدون نورا قليلا وإشراقا ضعيفا إشراقا Now this distinction has appeared only because the souls We are preoccupied with this world and their detachment from it is in proportion to their strength and their weakness like the healthy person who has fallen sick and a sick person when he has become well when this impediment is removed the souls acknowledge the existence of knowledge from on high and realize that they were wise in their original state and pure when they were first created and their ignorance arose only through their association with this gross body and their continuance in this abode of trouble and place of darkness this life to be described as such is uh, i would say problematic uh, it is this life is mazratul akhira this is where the uh, people plan things for the uh, hereafter this life is full with signs pointing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ayat pointing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, this uh, this manzil which is described here as Kedr Muslim uh, it does have uh, it does have Al-Bayt Al-Haram it does have Al-Madina Munawara it does have the uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rendered the بين لابتيها render the haram between two hilly areas in Medina and we have the holy land itself uh, and it's not to be uh, I you know uh, it's not to be uh, um, it's not identical with the geopolitics of today uh, the holy land goes um, from what I have uh, uh, gathered all the way to Tabuk in uh, the Arabian Peninsula in Saudi Arabia today uh, this uh, this life has the uh, of course uh, the, there are so many uh, things that are uh, that counter this notion of Mahal uh, Muslim uh, uh, where are we from uh, Ayat al Nur? Where are we? So, we go back to the uh, text. Now, this distinction has appeared only because the souls were preoccupied with this world and their detachment from it is in proportion to their strength and their weakness like the healthy person has fallen sick and the sick person when he has become well when this impediment is removed the souls acknowledge the existence of knowledge from on high and realize that they were wise in their original state and pure when they were first created and their ignorance arose only through their association with this gross body and their continuance in this abode of trouble and place of darkness now the souls do not seek through study to create knowledge which is non-existent nor to bring into existence an intelligence which is lacking but they seek for the restoration of the original innate knowledge which has been lost that's not really uh, seeking knowledge 
uh, it's for the most part for the average person it's a matter of acquisition it is not retrieving anything um, again the idea has been uh, hammered down uh, it's not something that could be reconciled with Islamic uh, worldview because it does uh, a certain notion of disdain for the uh, for the body really al jasad al kathif al muslim it simply became sick because of this companion you know uh, accompanying this uh, this uh, this body at any rate so uh, Again, now the souls do not seek through study to create knowledge which is non-existent, nor to bring into existence an intelligence which is lacking, but they seek for the restoration of the original innate knowledge which has been lost. There is innate knowledge, but it's not, um, uh, you know, So when uh, collectively, um, cumulative knowledge of humanity at large is going to remain partial and it is conditioned uh, upon the will of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but there is uh, there is knowledge and we are asked to ponder upon the universe and to think and to think about about the uh, reason uh, the telos they tell us there is a certain theological you know uh, reason why this universe was created and we are asked to think about it not to recollect the meaning of it But they seek for the restoration of the original innate knowledge which has been lost for infirmity has come upon them through their preoccupation with the adornment of the flesh and setting it upon a sure foundation and putting its bases in order. Tazeen al jasad. Now the loving father, when he undertakes the training of his child and occupies himself with its concerns, forgets all other affairs and its content with one affair is and is content with one affair, and that is the affair of the child. So also the soul, because of its passionate love and pity, has been concerned with this edifice, meaning the body and has busied itself in building it up and training it and in um, solitude, solitude for its affairs. So the soul became submerged in the sea of human nature because of its weakness and its individuality and throughout its life it had the it had need of study in order to seek for the recollection of what it had forgotten being desirous of the recovery of what it had lost. For study is only the return of the soul to its own proper substance and the bringing forth of actuality of that which is contained, contained of course in potentiality and its own inner self, seeking thereby to perfect itself and to attain to its true happiness. But when, the, but when souls are so weak that they do not follow the right road or to the realization of their true nature, they attach themselves and have recourse to a master who is compassionate and wise and asks for his succor so that he may assist them in the search for what they desire and that for which they hope, like the sick person who is ignorant of what will cure him. But he knows that good health is praiseworthy and desirable. 
and he has recourse to a compassionate physician and exposes his state to him and takes shelter with him so that they so that he may heal him he may he may heal him and make his sickness to cease from him we have sometimes seen a land man fall sick with a particular infirmity affecting for instance the head and the breast so that his soul shuns all knowledge and he forgets what he has learned and it be becomes confused to him and all that he acquired in his past life and his days that are gone remains hidden within his memory and his recollection then when he has recovered and then when he has recovered and health has returned to him he ceases to be forgetful and the soul returns to what it had learned and then it remembers what it had forgotten in the days of sickness so we learned that the knowledge had not disappeared it was only forgotten and there is a distinction between obliteration and forgetfulness for obliteration and disappearance of what is engraved and impressed and forgetfulness is the obscuring of impressions and it is like the mists of or clouds which veil the light of the sun from the eyes of those who look not like the sunset which is the departure of the sun from a position above the earth to one below it so then the soul's preoccupation with, with study is the removal of the infirmity which has fallen has befallen it from the substance of the soul in order that it may return to what it knew in its original state and what it understood in its pristine purity and when you have understood the cause and purpose of study and the real nature of the soul and its substance then know that the soul which is sick needs to study and to spend its life in acquiring knowledge but as for the soul which realizes its sickness and whose infirmity is light and its evil trivial and its clouds thin and its natural disposition sound it has no need for excessive study and long toil on the contrary a very little consideration and reflection suffices for it because it is restored thereby to its original state and it returns to what it was at first and realizes itself and contemplates the mysteries within it and brings the potentiality which it possesses to actuality and what was implanted within it becomes an adornment to it and its affair is completed and its condition made perfect and it comes to know many things in a, in a very few days then it interprets what is known in the right way and becomes wise perfect articulate articulate here mutakallima and seeks light by approaching universal soul which pours forth of its abundance when it encounters the individual soul and the latter becomes assimilated assimilated to it by way of passionate love in the beginning and it cuts off the root of envy and the beginnings of contempt and turns aside from the vanities of this world and its pomp and then it has reached this stage it has become wise and has attained to salvation and to victory and this what all men desire chapter 7 on the real meaning on the real meaning of knowledge from on high and the means to, to attaining it فصل حقيقة العلم للدني وأسباب حصوله now that knowledge from on high is the irradiation 
the uh, of attaining it really uh, how it occurs it's more than it is not tahsil husul uh, there's a there's a there's a subtle difference really here know that the knowledge from on high is the uh, irradiation of the light of inspiration and inspiration comes after com completion as God most high said by a soul and him who fashioned it completely by a soul in him who fashioned it completely and completion is the making around of the soul and its return to its original disposition and this return is accomplished by means of three things first Here, as listed as ABC, the study of the old branches of knowledge and taking the greatest share of most of them. Be genuine self discipline and true med meditation. For the Prophet uh, alluded to this truth, saying, to him who to him who acts in accordance with what he knows god grants knowledge of what he does not know man alima wa amila bima alim awratha allah ilma ma lam yalam imam al iraq in his takhrij verifying this hadith uh, he uh, said that it is uh, a weak tradition nevertheless one can uh, support the meaning but not the chain of narrators one can support the meaning by the verse in the uh, Quran Allah wa Allah. So the meaning is uh, is plausible. Uh, it's there, despite the weakness in the chain of narrators. Then it's followed by uh, another hadith, which is more problematic in terms of the chain of narrators. The Prophet also said to him. Who worshipped God in sincerity for forty mornings? God made springs of wisdom arising from His heart to be manifested by His tongue. من أخلص الله تعالى أربعين صباحا أظهر الله تعالى ينبيع الحكمة من قلبه على لسانه. And one can uh, look up كشف الخفاء أو العجلوني about this hadith and he would find all these problems about the. Uh, different at least three versions uh, three chains of narrators all of them with uh, with problems and uh, it simply uh, they would render it as uh, uh, it's uh, forged that it has no uh, no origin but doesn't mean that you don't really try to have that kind of sincerity and uh, It should be a state of uh, of heart, really. And uh, see reflection, or when the soul has studied, and it is and is disciplined through knowledge. And then has reflected on what was known, was what was known to it, in accordance with what reflection requires. The door of the invisible is open to it. The door of the invisible. In Fatihu alayha babul ghayb. Now this is compared to a merchant. Uh, and he becomes wise, perfected, understanding, inspired, and victorious. Okay. The door of the invisible is open to it, just as to the merchant who disposes of his goods in accordance with with what the supposer requires, the gates of profit, profit like making a profit uh, gain in business are open. And if he followed the wrong course, he would fall into the dangers of loss, bankruptcy. So he who reflects, since he follows the right way, becomes one of those who understand, and the window into the invisible world is opened in his heart. And he becomes wise, perfected, understanding, inspired, victorious.
and uh, here it is another um, hadith that is mentioned by uh, in Kashf al Khafa by Al Ajloni uh, for having a you know, programmatic chain of, uh, of narrators. The to reflect for one hour is better than 70 years of devotion. 60 tafakur sa'a khayr tafakur sa'atan khayrun min ibad 60 sana in Arabic. 60 years in Arabic, 70 years in the English. There are different versions, anyhow. But it, it's not uh, a sound tradition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa alam. But we will enumerate the conditions of reflection in another treatise since the exposition of reflection and how it comes about and its true meaning is an obscure matter requiring further elucidation which will be facilitated by the help of God Most High. And now we will bring this treatise to an end. This is Imam al-Ghazali still speaking. And now we'll bring this treatise to an end. For in these words is enough for those to whom they are directed. فَإِنَّ فِي هَذِي كَلِمَاتِ كِفَايَةً لِأَهْلِهَا Then he uh, cites the following verse from the Quran, still from uh, Surah An-Nur. He to whom God does not appoint light will have no light. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَجْعَلِ اللَّهُ لَهُ نُورًا فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ نُورٍ God is the Lord of those who believe and in Him we should put our trust. May God bless our Lord Muhammad and his family and his companions and give them peace. For God is our sufficiency, and how excellent a protector is He! And there is no might nor power save in God, the Exalted, the Almighty. And in Him is my confidence at all times. Praise be to God, the Lord of all created things. That's how the this street is. Uh, والله ولي المؤمنين وعلى التكلان وصلى الله تعالى سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم حسبنا الله ونعم وكيل ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم عند النظر ما نسكرت عليه ثقة في كل أوان وحين والحمد لله رب العالمين and uh, this particular one was uh, the, the manuscript in the year 970 And that's uh, 465 years after the death of Imam al-Ghazali. This is, uh, this treatise is not, yeah, you know, is not, I mean, to say that it is infused with Neoplatonic uh, language does not reflect the, uh, the fact that it is written from a Neoplatonic Neo uh, perspective and that's not really the position of Imam al-Ghazali at all neither the language nor the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'la wa a'lam wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh